we drink tequila, we talk. Welcome to Team Tequila Talks. Talk, talk. Okay, getting started. Listen to that sound. Ready? Mm-hmm. Chris. Chris. Love it. Love it. Okay. So we have a little flight happening today. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get poured for our cheers so we can start off our Team Tequila Talks with a cheers. We have our friends over at Poppy joining us in a bit and we're just getting a little bit of a head start on them because it wouldn't be team tequila talks if we didn't start without cheers so your hosts cassandra gina mel and sherry on gonzalez welcome to team tequila talks our episode today is going to be a i don't want to say a juicy one what's a good adjective here a wet one no a wet one a would wet be bad i mean be bad. i mean it's gonna be hard nice hard and round what if you want it to be soft well, we never really want it to be soft. That's unhealthy. Well, it could be a little bit soft. What if, you know, you're trying to work some stuff out? So it's moist. Moist? People hate that word. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Honestly, the word it doesn't bother me. If you don't like the word moist, it sounds super personal. I, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother, bother me. me. So I'm sure everybody has heard the expression, what does your poo say about you? And that is what we're going to get into a little bit today. Poo as in poo poo. Yeah, the the poo. Not boo. The one and only poo. Not your boo, your poo. Well, I guess like not the one and only because you have what you've got to have like tens of thousands in a lifetime. How many many poops do you think you have in a lifetime? Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Cheers. I think think a healthy body is pooing at least once a day. So if you live until you're 60 and you're, well, infants poo, well, no, because then if you're newborn, you're pooing like. Mm, four times a day, three yeah, times a day. But that, mm, yeah, okay. but it adds up quick. And then because those younger years, then when you get older, probably once a day, you live it to you're what, 75 now? Maybe this What's should it? have been math that we did, you know, before we did an, uh, an episode on it. That would have been a lot of numbers though. It would. I would think it's probably- It depends like, how long you live though. I feel like we're going to live I, a decent amount of time. I'm going to say 30,000 poos. I'm going to say 30,000 30, poos. Somebody do the math on that for us. <laughs> Average poos in a lifetime. What? So what are we drinking? Sure. We are drinking right now some Blanco tequila. We have a flight with poppy sodas. We'll get into the prebiotic, probiotic situation of that. Oh, yeah. Right now we're drinking a, a Blanco with a ginger lime. And it's refreshing. Oh, it's so really hot. set up a little mule for us over we here. Do. It's like a tequila mule. So I will say that I have loved poppy for a while now. And their ginger lime is basically like... A ready to go mixer in a can. All you have to do is open it up and add your favorite beverage. In our case, tequila. Tequila. And you could even add a little mint to this, fresh mint, and you really. Could. I think that would be very fresh refreshing. Mint. Yeah, I think that would be very refreshing. You're like halfway to Cuba or Mexico, depending. A mule would be Mexico. No. Well, mojito is like a Cuban. mojito would be Cuban, Cuban. Okay, Spanish. They it's... drink a lot of like rum and mojitos yeah. in Spain. Yeah. In Europe, in yeah. Canada. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would say Mexico. So we are going to have our friends Poppy on in just a few minutes here. But I've been a fan with for, of them for a while. It is all about a healthy gut. These are low sugar, low calorie, good for you sodas. And we're lucky enough to have them on to hear a little bit about their story and about their background. Because let me tell you, when it comes to convenience, it's really hard to beat Poppy as a mixer. It really is. I mean, I have it stocked in my uh, pantry. It is really one of a kind. And I find that my friends who are the soda drinkers, the, the Pepsi, the root beer, when I mix and they're like, oh, can I have a Hennessy and root beer? I'm like, well, I just replace it with the poppy. I know. <laughs> I, look, I can't convert the world to drink tequila. Some you people just like what they like. You said that like you have had a lot of experience. I have with friends who that like, are just like go yeah, to with the Hennessy. And one like, okay. thousand yeah, percent. Right. I have people that are in my family and friend group who come over and I have their standard. Look, I respect your choices. And yep. if I'm hosting, yep. Yep. I will Provide buy the bullshit. You yeah. your, your bullshit. See, I, you know, when people are coming to, I'm not going to stand in someone's way of what they serve at their house, but I got to say, when people come to my house, I straight up am like, you know, you can bring what you'd like over, but that you're not going to find any Diet Coke here. No. You will not. You can get some Zevia, which again, Zevia is even still a little bit of a treat because it's got a, a lot of Zevia in it, but yeah, it's stevia, all yeah. things, st- Stevia in it, Stevia in a Zevia, <laughs> but it's... 
the better, the, the thing is, this is all about making an improvement. It's a better version of if you're going to have a soda, don't overload your body with sugar or f- artificial sweeteners right. and, and flavoring and coloring and all of that stuff. Right. So the poppies are really great because they have prebiotics. They've got apple cider vinegar. They're better for your gut health, better for your immunity. And I think they're sweetened. Yep. Stevia. They're, they're sweetened with stevia a little well, bit in there. and natural juice. Yeah. So we thought that we would try a silver, a reposado, an añejo, and a mezcal. Yeah. We've got our poppy flight happening today. And it's early here in LA, people. We will not lie. We are doing the real thing. Because poppy is based out of Austin, Texas. And <laughs> so we got to oh, work with Are they, it. they in Texas? We got to work with the central oh, time zone I would, here. I would, this happens I would sometimes. Think Texas gut microbiome. Whole Foods was founded in Austin. That's right. That's right. You know? Um, so anyway, we're going to bring on our friends from Poppy, but also we're going to talk a little bit about the gut health of probiotics and prebiotics and what your poo says about you. We've got a whole fun chart and everything. You really can't do. wait to dive in. Yes. And we've done a whole episode on Poppy already. So if you I want. feel like we didn't do a whole episode. But we, we talked did, about the pro and, we and the pre. We talked about the pro and the pre. Yeah. And now we're going to bring in the experts. Yes. We're going to bring in the experts to actually. You they know, can educate us even yeah, further. They're going to educate us. It's going to be great. Allison. <laughs> okay. So we got a head start on our little poppy tasting. We have four flavors here. We've got our ginger lime, our strawberry lemon, our orange, and our watermelon. And we decided to pair it with four different types of tequila. So we've got a mezcal, we've got a reposado, we've got a silver, we've got an añejo. And, and a blanco. Oh, silver, yeah. Silver, blanco, blanco, silver, you know. How, uh, how so, did you guys pair with what flavors? Okay, what flavors? great question. The I'll let blanco, Sherry decide. The blanco is with the ginger lime. It's We're little doing mule. little mule. We have the mezcal with the strawberry lemon, the reposado with the orange, and the añejo with the watermelon. Yummy. That's and I thought really long and hard about the pairings, but I feel like it's going to be really, really tasty. Well, so far, so good. I know. We're on our silver. We're on our silver ginger lime. We're going to work our way down. We actually drink here at Team Tequilas, and it is early, but we are honest, real people. We get our work <laughs> done before we, we I do. mean, technically this is work, but we get the, the other stuff done. We get the kids the handled. Kids, we get husbands, the business handled, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. And we try to, do, sometimes that just means waking up a little bit earlier and handling business a little bit earlier. I know. My day started hours ago. Mine did too. Good no makeup at <laughs> like, like 6.45. Ago, yeah. It's just not a vibe for me. Yeah. We usually try to wait. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's, it's past noon for me. So I definitely don't mind joining you guys. Like yeah. I'm definitely yeah. level at any time. So I definitely have some as well, Mescal, Blanco, some other stuff going on here. So I will join you guys. Yes. Great. Love it. We love a joined friend. Yep. We'll welcome you in with a cheers when you're ready. Just give yeah. us a little Just cheers. A and cheers. we're really excited to hear more about the story of Poppy because here at Team Tequila Talks, we are all about health and nutrition and do, just kind of doing things in a better way, breaking your soda habit, like your traditional soda, your Coca-Cola, your Pepsi, your Sprite, et cetera. Totally. And when you're at a party, you're at your friends, or if you just want to keep stuff in the fridge, you don't want to have to rely on a bunch of sugar, junk, artificial flavors and coloring and additives. And we were just saying how this is kind of the perfect mixer in a can. It's obviously delicious by itself as well. It's so good as a mixer, though. I recommend it to everybody. (laughs) (laughs) It's such a great grab-and-go mixer. And with all the flavor options, it's really phenomenal because I feel like this could go with gin. It could go with rum. Hennessy. Vodka. (laughs) Jack and Coke. Yes. So tell us the story of Poppy and how it came about and all that good stuff. Yes. And I know we're here to drink and have a great time, but it did start from me having a ton of different gut health issues. And this was like six, seven years ago before gut health was on trend and everyone was talking about it and talking about what you put in your body, like helps kill your body. So I was totally lost. And so I did what a lot of people do. Do you, and you're not really supposed to, as I Googled all my symptoms on the internet Yeah, and Dr. I Google. read drinking, <laughs> yeah, you know, Google is just the best. And so I read drinking like apple cider vinegar could reset and detox your body. And at the point, my stomach was always bloated. I didn't have very good skin. I was just like, okay, sure. I'll give it a try. 
And I was shocked at how amazing the apple cider vinegar reacted with my body and just made me feel better from like digestion problems to the bloating and everything. But the problem was, is it tasted horrible. I don't know if you guys have, have you guys ever drank straight apple cider vinegar? Yes, I we, have. We do. We used to, well, we used to do shots. Well, so the thing is. You is, used to is the key, right? It's I hard love to the taste of vinegar. I'm a sauce person. And anytime that I have any type of vinaigrette or even just like French fries and vinegar, whatever. I love dousing okay. myself in vinegar. So I don't mind the taste. However, it'll wreck your enamel. If you just it do a so shot hard. of apple cider vinegar, you have to mix it with stuff. I, I went to the dentist and my dentist was like, what did you, what have you been doing differently? Cause you've got no. some soft spots on your teeth. Yeah. And I had to get some prescription toothpaste, like an old lady, because <laughs> I was just like, Oh, apple cider vinegar is well, so good for you. Well, just let me do the shots of it. They say you have to drink it through a straw. If you want to do a shot yeah. because it, or dilute it. it or dilute yeah. it. Yeah. Just the shots are, they hurt your, like they, they're like heavy. They like hate your stomach they're too. Potent. If you're not used to it. They're potent. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, for me, I was like, okay, I, I, I am actually a little bit like you, like it wasn't as hardcore, but I think I was more, I couldn't get my husband to try it or anyway. I was like, it's so amazing. And like, it's, you know, try it. But I was like, okay, let's be real. It doesn't taste amazing. It tastes okay. Like straight, but like, I think I can make it taste better. So I literally went to my kitchen and spent months playing around with different ingredients. But what I really wanted was to keep it healthy. Right. Cause I did it because of the health issues I had had. I didn't want to drink 150 calories with like 39 grams of sugar or anything crazy. So I came up with like, uh, the way we make them and started playing around. And then we took them and, uh, to the local farmer's market started selling like crazy, got into whole foods. And then we did go into shark tank and ended up getting a deal on shark tank and then launched nationwide with poppy everywhere. That's pretty phenomenal. That's pretty phenomenal. And also I do think gut health for Americans specifically, because our diet out of probably most countries isn't great with the food industry. I think I used to do in college, like just sparkling sodas, like just like totally. basically yeah. club sodas with like lime. I think mm-hmm. that was like mm-hmm. the extent of it. it was like lime or lemon. And I think when I found, mm-hmm. I actually was at Cassandra's house and she had one of these and I was like, what the hell is this? And my husband has, <laughs> my husband has gut issues. And I was reading the back and I was like, and my husband takes like a mad, like aggressive probiotic, like pill that's like fermented right. in the fridge. And so I asked his doctor, I'm like, Hey, these sodas. And he's like, look, he has such, you know, bad gut bacteria that couldn't hurt. And it's a pre and a pro. Right. And people don't usually know how those two are having a know. symbiotic relationship. We're going to get into yeah. that in a second. I am oh. going to move on. I want the orange next. Don't because tell me what I, you want. You got to pick the tequilas. Oh, I'm picking the orange. Okay. okay. You guys had the lime ginger, right? Already. Yes. yes. And this one is definitely like what most people call like our skinny margarita. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys are moving on to the orange. The Which orange. Are- and I have a reason for moving on to the orange. So the ginger lime, I feel like is very mule like. I love a mule because again, I love vinegar, but I also love that tart of the lime. So the ginger lime is definitely a cross between a skinny margarita and a mule for sure. It's like, it's Solid. like a super quick, simple mule. And that's one of my favorite uh, on the go, something quick. Just, you know, you're like, you're at a party. You don't have time to be mixing a bunch of stuff. So just cracking this open with a slice of fresh lime, bam, cocktail within like 20 seconds. It's amazing. It's so good. Yeah. You just, it's, you don't need like anything else. Okay. So the orange, the reason I want to bring up the orange is because I've had this before by itself. I'm about to try it with some reposado right now. Um, But it tastes almost exactly like your classic orange soda, except it doesn't have bright fluorescent orange colors that should probably never be in your body in the first place. Yeah. I've got like a hint of color here, but that's the reposado, not the orange. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a little bit because we have like fresh fruit juice in it. So there is a little bit of orange you'll get from that. It depends on like which can you get some are like more orange than others. But yeah, that neon color is not it. No, not that's and that's the thing is we we talk about artificial preservatives and flavorings and colorings. And that's kind of in this room anyway, that tends to be sort of our number one red flag. It's a hell no thing you do not. It's a hell no. It's a hell no. 
it's the thing that you do not put in your body. So like if you are going to have some sugar, fine. If you are going to have some treats, fine. You want some fried foods, okay. But what we really want to avoid are like fluorescent blue colored and flavored foods with a bunch of preservatives. If a bug doesn't eat it, I don't want to eat it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's true. Like that's why they like ants don't eat Twinkies. Do you notice that? Really? I had no idea. Pantry, but I actually never. Yeah, there are certain like, things that are so artificial that bugs, bees, ants, flies, uh, they they won't eat those foods. And that's like, that that's that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. If Mother Nature doesn't want it, I don't want funny. it either. That is. Ooh, this orange with the reposado. I know. I was just about to say that this was an excellent pairing. I don't I, know if you got a reposado over there. Uh, it's really yummy because you get the little caramelly, vanilla-y thing happen with reposado and the orange kind of like brightens it up a bit. It's actually very nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think the orange and episode is, is yeah. excellent together. What brand do you guys use? Like, cause I'm so super curious. We have a, we have an array here Yes, because we didn't want, to, we didn't, we did a little bit of an, a side-by-side experiment a few episodes ago and we used the exact same handmade lime mixer, but we used two different mezcals and they tasted so different within the cocktail. So I didn't want to go across the board. We have a lot of brands that we know and love here and we just wanted to mix it up a little bit. So we have different options and we're not just sticking to one type of barrel or processing or batch of agave. So um, in this instance, Love we're it. using Tres Generaciones. Tres Generaciones. Reposado. Reposado. Mm-hmm. And this is the Salsa family. This is Salsa. It is their so higher cool. label. And Salsa is one of the OGs. Yeah. So they're, they're called the Three Dons. Don Salsa, 1873. He's like the OG, OG, OG. And then his brother came the around in 1903. Triple OG. <laughs> Don Eladio is the double OG. <laughs> And he was kind of, yeah, he was like a big jefe and kind of, kind of brought it back into, brought, brought it to America in 1903. And it was like a junk tequila brand that everyone would like mix with a bunch of lime to cut that ethanol flavor. And then Don Francisco Javier, 1946, he's the first global ambassador of tequila in the world. The three caballeros. So this is their refined, it's Familia Salsa, and this is their refined. So I thought it would be fun. They sent us this bottle. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of dr- mix it with something because we actually haven't tasted yet yeah, on the show. This but it's actually for us. very good with the poppy. It's great with the orange. Yeah. Good with the orange poppy. So I feel like this would be really good just with orange. The tres, tres generaciones would just be really good with orange notes in general. We've been, I feel like we've been using a lot of fresh orange lately. Yes. Uh, coincidentally, that's how it goes. Well, it's summer. Well, is orange a summer fruit? No, it's a fall fruit. I mean, I still have it's a, a fall fruit. fruit. It's it, a fall. It fruit. is. I still have a bunch of yeah, orange. Though, citrus so. is fall. I think that's but our it state is fruit. Almost fall. I know. Right now. Well, I think it's because it's temperate in Los Angeles. Yeah. So we kind of get more year round citrus. True. It's not fall here. You know, we don't have seasons, but Texas definitely, <laughs> Austin definitely has seasons. We, <laughs> we pretend. Yeah, we get, we get all of them. You get all of them, which I love. Wait, so pre prebiotics versus probiotics. Versus. We've talked about this before on the show, yes. but we'd like an expert's opinion. We would love to. Yeah. Hear so, so I think the best way to think of like pre and pro is like probiotics. Most people have heard of a probiotic. It's usually a living organism. It's something that you put into your body through a probiotic pill or a kefir drink, or, you know, a lot of people will get it in yogurts or stuff like that. You get like a probiotics, a living organism, a prebiotic is actually food for the probiotic. So it's like a fiber. It's kind of the best way for me to explain it is you have your garden and they're growing it and the prebiotics is the fertilizer to help the garden grow. So it's the food for your current gut flora and bacteria, as well as food for the probiotics. So I say probiotics plus prebiotics equals a happy and healthy gut. And that's why we have it on the front of our can, like be gut happy, be gut healthy, because you need both. And I think a lot of people get confused with it in talk about like this healthy halo, but prebiotics, honestly, it can be even more important than the probiotic when it comes to gut health. I will say that when you have a stomach flu or you have to take antibiotics for something, whether it is an illness or a surgery or or whatever, your gut can be messed up for months Mm -hmm. after. And I'm not even just talking about like 
your bathroom experience. I'm talking about like <laughs> gas, bloating, gas, and bloating, digestion, crazy. stomach aches, sour stomach, yeah. all of that. And the first thing that I do if I'm in that situation, like the last time I got COVID, I vomited. And oh. I felt like my gut was messed up for a, like weeks. It was after a that. while. Your gut had a had it a moment. A minute. It like I didn't moments. get that sick from COVID, but I got I had like lasting gut issues because of the the violence in which the COVID decided to come out of me. <laughs> I'll just like leave it like that just That's for right. people that are, you know, maybe eating their lunch right now. Um, hopefully a lunch full of probiotics. <laughs> but the first thing that I do is go reach for a broad spectrum probiotic. And I'm on that for a minimum of 30 days because there are so many different types of probiotics. Some are for specific parts of your gut. They've done all of these studies. Like I think it's Basilius yeah. gacillus. Is yeah. they they found that people that are um that have excess body fat are lacking that probiotic yeah. and then they put them on that as a supplement and they end up losing like eight percent um of their of their pounds yeah. just because it's just their their gut is working more efficiently and there's less swelling and their their metabolism benefits as well. And then there's also a bunch of probiotics that are specifically designed to offset candida and some of the fungal yeah. and pH imbalances. I mean, when you body. get, look, when you get those yeasty times, oh, which we geez, all, Sherry. we do, I mean, <laughs> we get yeasty. No, I mean. it's so important. Every like, unhealthy gut it manifests in so many different ways throughout your body from like acne can be a problem from an unhealthy gut to skin, your, skin like, too. Yeah. You need to overgrowth to the bloating to actual joint pain yeah. and inflammation in the body can all stem from your gut. And so they really do say like 70% of your body's immunity stems from your gut. One. And so if your gut is not right, like you are not right. And so, you know, you're talking so much about like the probiotic aspect, but I do really think the prebiotic is one that a lot of people miss. And there's actually more studies on prebiotics that people people just like are not talking about. And I think it's, it's the time and now for prebiotic and it's so important to work together symbiotically, like you were saying earlier. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I think doctors now, I mean, my gastro, my husband's gastro, I, you know, I'm the type of friend that's like, before you change your diet or add any, if you were doing a mega change, you want to go back, yeah. you want to go vegan or you want to not be vegan and go back to meat. The number one thing I always say is get your inflammation levels checked. Because mm -hmm. it's in the science. And the first thing I did back in the day was I got my inflammation level checks back when no one was talking about inflammation unless you had like arthritis or like some weird autoimmune. And it's like, when you see, when you change your diet and you see your inflammation levels go down into a normal range, you're like, Oh, it is diet based. Well, food is, and medicine. you don't really know what is the whole chicken and egg thing. Is my inflamed gut causing my symptoms, or are my symptoms causing my inflamed gut, which is yeah. worsening my symptoms? Right. I love the functional medicine movement that is exploding right now because I don't think that there's anything wrong with old school medicine when you need it. Listen, people used to die. From like syphilis, it's right. that's <laughs> easily preventable now. That's a good one, Sherry. <laughs> that's the first thing that popped in your head. They did. <laughs> it's true though. People would just die from fevers back then. Yes, in the like a splinter, a splinter, a hundred percent infection. Splinter. So listen, I am all about the marriage of Eastern and Western medicine. I acupuncture has worked wonders for my gut, but I also take over the counter probiotics to help with that. It's they work together. You right. can do both. And I think that the functional medicine movement is, is way more about wellness and prevention. And that is somewhere where you can go get your inflammation checked and get your levels checked. Even yeah. things like your hormones, your endocrine system, like your leptin levels, meaning like Everything. is my, are my hunger cues happening yeah. at the time uh, we're supposed to be your happening? Adrenals, all the things. And I the unfortunate thing about traditional medicine oh, sometimes is that they wait until something's wrong and then prescribe you something to manage it or fix it. Right. But now we have this explosion of nutritionists and functional medicine and, and this whole space that's stemming out of it about wellness products that are supporting that movement like this, instead of putting this excess sugar and you're having four sodas a day, four okay. traditional sodas, and you're wrecking your gut, right. mm -hmm. you're actually doing the opposite and you're supporting your gut. Well, well I think this treat. would classify as like a functional medicine. I know I drink this on the, after I work out, I have a poppy because I'm always like, huh, especially if it, after a heavy drinking night, I, you know, I have my elixir. <laughs> <Best> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's like, it's a great mixer, great non-alcoholic drink, but it's also a great hangover over cure. And like, I was something just like kind of tag onto what you guys were saying is a lot of people do talk about the gut health, but there's also with the prebiotics and fiber is the, have you guys ever heard of like FODMAP? Of yes. Like with them, yeah. Right. So like we're really low on it. So if you already have gut health problems, you don't want something that's really high on FODMAP. So it's like a ton of fiber. It'll actually like make your stomach Irritate. hurt. Irritate. So tell the yeah. peoples what the FODMAP is. Yes. Yeah. So it is just like higher prebiotics. So like everyone says put fiber in your diet right? Like you hear that Dr. Shira, you're like, Oh, so should I drink like metal mucil? No, that is like the way of the past. Do not do that. I mean, I guess you can, if you have certain problems, but, um, you want to keep it super low. So it's like irritants to your gut already. So it's like, just think if you're eating a bunch of fiber and you don't have enough, um, liquid and all these things that can like make you bloated and hurt. And you, it's this like weird period. It's like, you don't want your to upset your gut even more. So you want to find things lower on the FODMAP and it's, there's, there's a graph you can Google it of what foods and, and certain things. It's like broccoli is really high on it. And there's yeah, just like, like, like raw like, broccoli, yeah. raw yeah, broccoli yeah, is really right high. <laughs> and also like nightshades are really high. Yep. And then if you cook mm-hmm. them or steam them, then they get in the better they category. Lower. Roast That's them. because the yeah. protein in the skin is yeah. what's causing a lot of inflammation and yeah. irritation. And if you cook yeah. the protein, then you're breaking down the yeah. protein. You're making it more. I always say digestive. raw vegetables. I rarely, I mean, if I'm at a party and someone has some good dip with some broccoli and I'm going to eat them, but at my home, I do not really serve raw veggies because they do blow you. And I have a child and I want her to eat more. So I'm always like, if I give her some like raw veggies and like some vegan cheese dip, I know that then she's going to be like, "Ah." and she'll she'll say I'm full and I I can't eat the protein. So I definitely say steaming and or roasting. And I know there's a whole faction of people do not at me who are the raw, the raw food movement. I respect it. I get it, but it's not for me. Don't at me. <laughs> Wait, what are you pouring? I am pouring some in Yeho and we're going to do our watermelon pairing just in the spirit okay. of time. I think we, we, pour, we were a little heavy handed in the last pour. So, you know, are you calling trying... my, my, my no, pour is I, heavy? I just... If I was a bartender, so I would we're be... just trying to get through all four. I feel like flights are normally an ounce or two. Fine. Unless it's beer, right? Fine. Or cider, something like okay, that. Okay, we're doing And I want to try all of that. Okay. I want to try all okay. of that. Okay, okay. So. Um, question for you. Do prebiotics feed all types of probiotics? Because we were just talking about how many different probiotics there are on the spectrum and how they're, they're still in the early phases of studies about which type of probiotics benefit right. your skin, your gut, your weight management. Do the prebiotics feed all the probiotics or are there different, is our prebiotics specific right. to a certain type of probiotics? That's Very so, science question, a good question. No, that's such a good question. So there's different types of prebiotics, right? So like within poppy, we have the apple cider vinegar, which is the pectin in the apples, which is the type of fiber. And then you have like agave inulin. Then you've heard of chicory root. You've heard of, you know, Jerusalem root. There's so many different ones out there and some affect your body a little bit different. So yes, all of them are a little bit different and do different things. And that's why sometimes it's like a combination of different ones and everything. And you kind of have to find what works good for your body. And some are really high on that FODMAP and some are really low. So, so if you're buying ahead. poppy, you want the variety pack to hit all spectrums of the <laughs> right. Well. Yeah. With, within poppy, we have the agave and Nealon and then apple cider vinegar and all of them. And once again, we don't want to go like super ham with it because we're trying to, you know, not upset the gut health. And right. then like some of our competitors, it's like ridiculous. They have like 30 ingredients with so many things. You can only drink one or your tummy would hurt with us. It's like, to your point, you guys are trying to whole flight and you're drinking multiple and it's doing these things. It's like, you don't want to irritate it even more. Because you can go overboard with the pre and probiotics. Like our gastro told us one time, people who were, I forget the drinks at the time that everyone was drinking. Remember kombucha? With the kombucha. kombucha. And yeah. he was just like, he, I was like, I was like, I gave, I was like, oh, I gave my husband the two kombuchas. He was like, I hate that company. He was, I mean, look. Hi, kombucha. <laughs> I'm just saying what a doctor said about your company. That is it. But he was basically <laughs> saying three billion what? strains of this. That's for a probiotic. Yeah, for a probiotic. He was like, that is not for everyday consumption. He he told me when he told me once a week, maybe twice for a kombucha. I was, was going like, to say kombucha is not supposed to necessarily be an everyday no. thing. And there's this whole 
craft kombucha market and there's yeah. now this boozy kombucha booze booch the boozy like i ugh. know but he said that he there were more like i mean i'm gonna go there there are more like worms he said look i've seen worms? people you can develop so pre pro that's a probiotic i think kombucha is a probiotic, it's a probiotic. It's a probiotic yeah. he was it's basically saying yeah. that he had people who were doing like three and four a day like just going ham mm-hmm. and he said you can upset the gum the stomach so much where you get weird worm. I mean, these are live cultures. These aren't worms. just, they, they're live. They're not dead. And your body and your acid and all the stuff, he said, you can get certain organisms that grow up, which we already have in our gut, the gut lining and that helps like the peristaltic contraction to get the poo out. He's saying basically- Is that a like, technical term? Yes. It is technical. <laughs> peristaltic I mean, contraction. I digestion. So I love these conversations. I love it. I love it. <laughs> they are now also coming out with all of this, these studies. They have figured out that there is an actual physical link between the brain and the gut. Oh, and yes. almost all depression, True. anxiety, and any type of, uh, even people that have ADHD or Or the types obesity. Of autism, There's an obesity drug now 100%. that targets the brain and the gut. And so it's not that... Oh, you're you're depressed. Well, just take a probiotic. Of course, it's not that simple. We always say here at Team Heal Talks. Well, I do. I always say I don't. Do not take our medical advice. Take it. Do not take it. <laughs> take it. But there are all we do is report back on what we have found because we we love reading all of these studies and staying up on on the newest nutrition news and and basically how to live our best lives and and a little bit of fun with tequila and probiotics. It's all about balance. It's a balance. It is a balance. And so the the studies that are coming out now about brain and gut are saying, listen, we don't know if the gut issues are causing your anxiety or depression, but we do know that they can aggravate it and play off of each other and make things worse, worse. which is why when you have a lot of people that have ADD, ADHD, autism, and a spectrum of some brain disorders, they put them on a CFGF diet, which is casein-free, gluten-free diet, or they will take out a lot of the processed foods and because all of these artificial flavors, yeah. colors, they're all just making your brain rapid fire. And are you kidding me? It's like, it's like cocaine to the brain. It really. is. I mean, that's what For they kids. say. When you, well, and for kids, it's even worse, yeah. right? So yeah. you give your kids that neon blue cotton candy at the carnival and, you know, you got to let your kids live a little, let them have some birthday cake. Sure. sure. But when you make it neon, what happens is it's not actually the sugar that is causing the kids to go crazy. It's the sugar in conjunction with, with the, the dye. Have yeah. you ever put pop rocks in a soda bottle? Because that's what happens with your brain, brain. when you yeah. take artificial colors, flavors, and dyes yeah. and pair it with sugar. And it's just brain overload. If your kids just had like a, a homemade natural sugar cookie or treat or cake, mm-hmm. they're probably not going to go as nuts. Right. I'd say like, I, I would put money on it. I'd say, cause I, I do, I give my kids sugar all the time. It's just right. clean sugar. And well, she's it's super fine. clean. Yeah. yeah. Like her, my daughter's chocolate waffles in the morning, maybe like bananas and like cacao. Oh and my like, daughter loves baking. She's I, got yeah. her cookbook. Well, we have her paleo. Yeah. She's, she's a good baker. She's she made us some baker. ice cream last a couple of homemade, weeks. That homemade ice cream. Was I, legit. it was, legit. I was impressed. It was coconut milk base. And I thought, oh, you know, the kids are, cook- you know, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to just, I'm going to rally here for the kids. But I was like, damn, I could not believe I, I said, next time you make this, you have to make a double batch. I know. Wait, so I'll say this. So my daughter does is allowed a poppy. She doesn't. So kids, kids love it. Like she, cracked kids. kids it is. But I, my doctor told me because I was like, hey, you know, obviously my husband has gut issues and I'm very sensitive. I don't I do not have gut issues. Um, My daughter does not. But my husband does. So I'm very sensitive to like what is overload for a kid because they have a really good if you feed your kid clean, they have a very good gut. Microbiome. They are so much more resilient than we are. Yes. And they just have a cleaner system and it's more efficient and it's more effective in like cleaning out. And he was like, he was like, I've never heard of poppies. And he did a little research on it. He's like, oh, my gosh, if this is around in the 50s, we wouldn't have half the gastro patients oh, that we yeah. have now. Well, so yeah, some good habits right my right. kid yeah my kids like they don't know really any different like one they think we make like every drink on the face of the earth and I'm like no we just make poppy <laughs> <laughs> and you know they've been drinking it since they were basically could drink like one and um they don't understand that it's like not real soda so it's like Same, it's a treat yeah. they go crazy and if you just really think about it some people are like oh you give that to your kids and i'm like okay what you're gonna give them orange juice and you know apple juice and it's like 40 grams of sugar with, from a like, carton where all the nutrients are removed yeah. yeah 
yeah and all these things and they're like once you really like think about they're like oh yeah that is good and to your point earlier life is all about balance so it's like yeah don't give your kid 20 poppies and like don't give them (laughs) you know like 30 pebbles and stuff like that but I, I'm the same way. Like I give my kids sugar. I, I let them drink poppy, but it's all like in moderation and balance. And like, let's not go crazy here. Yeah, I agree. And I think here we always teach moderation. Mm-hmm. We ourselves yeah. do not. Someone DM'd me like a month ago and said, wow, you guys must be wasted all the time. I'm like, dream. That's the dream of mine. But unfortunately, <laughs> I am a functioning responsibility. I'm a functioning adult with a child, husband's businesses, like there's no way. But when we have fun, we go hard. Uh, I will say. We have moved on to the watermelon hey. and and Yeho. I got to say this tastes like candy. It's candy. Watermelon. It's so good. It, it tastes, tastes like, like a Jolly like, Rancher. It tastes like a Jolly Rancher. So, so I don't know if it is the that. Yeho blend. Hold on. I'm going to take a sip of this without the just. Yeah. It's, it's like, literally. We hear that it tastes like Jolly Rancher, but I promise it's all natural. I actually. Well, it's to not the super taste. sweet. Uh-huh. No, yeah, no, it's not. But to this day, I still formulate every single flavor. So any flavor that we launch, like I make here in my kitchen at home, because I want to make sure it is clean ingredients. And it's something I would enjoy and drink. And so I can play around with it. And actually, like a Jolly Rancher was one of my like target tastes Ooh. with it. Because like, I am i don't eat those anymore. But I loved them as a kid. Type of, And I was like watermelon, because you can go watermelon it can be like really cantaloupe. Yeah, right. It's like melony and riny. And you're like, eh, I don't want to drink so much for right. me. I was like, I, don't know. I will. I will say this. I do a, sp- a famous spinach pancake. I make spinach pancakes. And one day I saw the strawberry. I saw the strawberry lemon. And I, I normally like to have it a lot of bubbles and fizz. So I open my fridge, put it in there. And it's, it's, it has spinach and bananas. And it's like, oh, strawberry, spinach, bananas, lemon. Because it gives it the fizz. And I did like a half a can for, I made the whole batch sure. of, yeah. And it was delicious. My daughter was like, oh, you taste a hint of the strawberry. And I use it because yeah. you don't use the carbonation to make the bubbles yeah. on the pancakes. Yeah. It makes it like blow up more. Yeah. And they were, fl- they make it more airy. Because yeah, yeah, it makes it yeah. airy. And I did the strawberry lemon with my spinach pancakes and it was delicious. Love that. Strawberry lemon is my personal favorite. It's okay, like my own. We're going to get there so right like, now. Oh, we're doing a mess. Because, yeah, we got to get this. I we got to get this last one. We got to get okay. it in. Where's the poo chart I sent you, Sherry? The poo chart Have is... you heard of the poo chart? We want to oh, talk yeah. about this we're with you. We're going to talk about this. Okay. Let's so go. is it, I want to say Bristol Myers, Briggs Myers. That's not it. What is it, Sherry? Nope. Hold on. Hold on. So there's this chart. Okay. For those of you that don't know. The Bristol stool. Bristol, yeah. Bristol stool, yeah. So there are seven types of poop, okay? And this is directly related to gut health. And I had a friend that's like, I'm always a five. And I'm sitting here like, maybe maybe it's some fiber. I don't know. Like, it seems like maybe some fiber, a little like higher. um, Is it protein fats? I'm not a gastro doctor. But I just feel like you should live in like, the three to four range. So this range is all about how hard is your poo? What's the shape? How big are they? Is it watery? Is it firm? Is it soft? Yes. And it has this whole rundown of basically you can tell your gut health by what your poo looks like. And you're like a one is like the worst. Like you're so sad. I feel like rabbit anybody, poos. That's constipation. It's worse. Rabbit poos. Well, it's, it's, rabbit it's, poos. Like if your child has it or anything, it's so when sad. When you have a baby and that you put them, start putting Children them on, on solids, have. like you make them the squash when they first can eat off the boob and or off the formula. And they have the rabbit poos and they hurt and they cry and they have so much gas. Right. Anyone so no with one. seven either, like liquid either. No, so seven it's like, is you you were ill. Seven is bad. like do you diarrhea. Have... You should maybe. So, go do you want? To... I will go through a quick, a very quick rundown I'll of, read of, of the shapies. Go one. Get us. A type one with the poos is a separate hard lumps like nuts. Mm-hmm. So, you're just doing Stop about it. four of those Painful. puppies a day. Sounds, it, you're not getting A enough fluids, liquids, first electrolytes. of all. Electrolytes, protein. Type two is lumpy and sausage like. So that looks, it looks like raisins on a log, oh. which isn't that great type, but type three, the, the, the best types are type three, which is sausage with a little cracks, comes out smooth, takes you seconds. And type four is smooth, soft sausage or a snake, mm-hmm. which three and four are the best, which is what you aim for. And that is a diet that is mad balanced with proteins, veggies, and carbs and liquids. And enough. You, you, balance. The liquids, you know we love balance. Balance. balance and the, 
A balanced gut and enough oils, but not seed oils, the right oils. Yeah, we don't want inflammatory seed oils. Yeah. Seed oils, you always want to avoid it. And the hard problem is, is they're everywhere these days. I know. You pick up a package of- even Don't mention oat to milk to Cassandra. She's going to fucking lose it on you. Milk. Don't get me started on oat milk. <laughs> okay, I don't like oat milk. But she, she, it tastes like cardboard. You know what? I said I wouldn't start. I know. Let's get through types five, six, and seven. And All we'll right. circle back on the seed oils. Type- Five is soft blobs with clear cut edges. So it, it's like type one in the little pellets, but they're soft pellets, which is a no. Type six is mushy consistency with raggedy edges. It says ragged edges, but I like the word raggedy. It just makes it's more like, sense. Yeah. It's wispy. It, it's wispy, wispy, edges. Edges, wispy edges. And they're like one in five, but I'll take they're over. just blobby. And type type seven, seven is shit your pants. Basically, Ooh, it's it's sometimes when you have too much wine poops. Oh, Type seven is wine. is wine poops. Okay, so I gotta say, Sherry, I kind of was questioning your pairing the mezcal with the strawberry lemon, and I gotta say, that you it good? nailed it because the smoky mezcal with the lemon with the hint of strawberry. This might be my favorite one. Tell They've all been amazing. Well, actually. we love a mezcal, but yes. I think I think this is just a good pleasant yeah. surprise for me because I didn't think to put the mezcal with the lemon. And I always do tequila with the ginger and lime. That's kind of a go-to for me anyway. So it's delicious, but it wasn't much of a surprise because I'm used to it, right? And I have to say that the lemon with the mezcal, this I think is, I think this is my winner. Personally. Yes. I, I like it. I love the um, Anejo and the watermelon Jolly Rancher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a go for me, but all of them were tasty. All of them. So back to the poo chart. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, yes. we got to discuss yeah. the well, yeah, there, There's a misconception. The there's a misconception too, because it's like the tire, like five, six, seven, it's like, you know, you don't have fiber in your diet and it's like super liquidy. And then like the ones lower is like too much fiber, but not enough liquid, right? It, it like throws off the balance. But something that we'll hear, honestly, here at Poppy with like the prebiotics and the apple cider vinegar is sometimes people drink it and they will go to the bathroom really quick or they'll have like a detox period. And it's because your gut needs a detox. But then if you can just get through that, and it doesn't happen to a lot of people, just the people that their gut is not right. Mm-hmm. If you can get through that like week afterwards, you're, you're going to be so much better. So sometimes when you're getting your gut right. You might be all over this chart and then just give it time. Don't give up after a day of like, oh, wow, I tried this product and it made me do this, or whatever. It, it's not going to heal itself overnight no. and try different things and try through different foods and different brands and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, give it time because I think people give up pretty quick. Cause if you have an uncomfortable situation down there, like you're like, okay, no, no, I don't want to do I'm this. Out. I want to go back. I- I, I agree with that. And I think any lifestyle change, diet change, you know, um, you know, any type of change in your life, psychologically, physiologically requires time. Brain gut. If you yes. are going through stress, it can absolutely mess up your gut. And totally. I think the thing that I want to end on as we wrap up here is it seems counterintuitive, but probiotics and prebiotics can help with both constipation and yeah. diarrhea. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It can't do both. And this is all about what we're saying. It's balance in the gut. And it is about making sure that your gut has the proper tools, or as you said, fertilizer growth for the garden to level itself out when you're going through something mentally or physically. Keep you regular, keep you healthy, keep you balanced. It's the balance of good and bad. Like I'm always like, everyone needs a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. And I have friends who push back. Everyone should be just good. And I'm like, in the bed. In it's the not bed, sustainable. It's, it's not, not sustainable, sustainable. But in the bed with your husband, do you really want to be good? Like, no. Sherry went there. I yeah. went there. You want to be a little bit of both. Life requires balance across the board. I would agree. 100%. I am right there with you guys. That's I always talk about it. We'll have to go and I'll have to try the strawberry with the mezcal is what you guys said, right? Yeah. Yes. You provide the poppy, I'll bring the mezcal. We'll bring yeah. the mezcal. Seems like a decent deal. Yeah, Allison, because... thank you for joining us. Everyone, yeah. check Bye. out Poppy. It is in Whole Foods. You can also go online and order it. You can get it on Amazon, actually. You can. You can buy cases no, like, if you're it, like me. No mm-hmm. excuse to not get on it. Just try it. I actually promise, like, any, I, I feel like this yeah. orange one is a great starter because it's just like Fanta orange. when you were a kid. Orange cream soda. Like but cream soda. It's, it just doesn't have any of the junk in it. So, Allison, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody thank check you. out Poppy. Your host, Cassandra Junimel and Sharon Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us on Team Tequila Talks. 
and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh. You don't even need an outro now. Look at that. Awesome. Thank you so much.